So how profitable is permanent jewelry? Hi, we're the founders of Linked Permanent Jewelry Training. My name is Jake Randolph. This is Sarah Otto with me. Sorry, I pointed the wrong way right here. Um, I know, I'm anyway. like, I'm seeing myself on the screen <laughs> over here. All right, so anyways, yeah, yes, this is our um, second part of our multi-series um, or multi-part series about what is permanent jewelry and why you should, you know, look into it because it's a huge trend. And so if you haven't seen part one, I'll include that, you know, on a link below. But anyways, let's talk about profits because that's what everybody cares about. You know, how much money can I make, you know, if I spend $10 on a piece of jewelry, then how much can I sell it for in this service? And so, um, first of all, let's talk about profit margins. So, um, th this is the number one reason I was attracted to this um, industry because when I look at profit margins, I'm thinking about one, you know, what is the difference between what it cost me to buy something, like buy the material uh, versus what I can charge for it? And two, what does it cost me in time? Because, you know, even if I can make 90% profit, like, you know, for example, even if I could pay $5 on a piece of, you know, chain material and make $100 for it, if it takes me, you know, five hours to do, that's not a good use of my time, in my opinion. And so um, even though $100 a day for some people is great. Um, so Sarah, um, can you kind of go over like, you know, I know you've been doing this service for a while. You've been a permanent jewelry artist. So what are your profit margins? And like, uh, can you kind of go over those numbers with us? So my profit margins to begin weren't that great because I didn't know where to get my jewelry and I didn't realize I was overpaying for it. Um, so basically, I mean, I have it written down right here. So you have sterling silver on your wrist, right? Right. We're going to say that that style link sterling silver needs to be between 60 and a hundred dollars for a bracelet. Um, at most, I probably spent $10 on a foot. The average woman's wrist size is five and a half inches. So we're going to say yours is six cause you're a dude, right? So we're going to split that $10 in half. So, uh, half of the foot is what I'm using to make the bracelet. So $5 on, um, expenses and I'm going to sell okay. it from anywhere between 60 to a hundred dollars. So that's okay. a no brainer, right? Yeah, even so if even anywhere... if I just sold it for sixty dollars, it's only going to be fifty five dollars that I made back. Yeah. So based on that math, if I'm doing it correctly in my head, it's about a twelve to twenty x return on investment. So if I invest five dollars into this, you know, I can make anywhere from twelve times that amount, sixty, to twenty mm -hmm. times that amount, a hundred. Um, right. Public math is fun. <laughs> so, yeah. um, okay. So as I alluded to earlier, you know, if it took you five hours to do that, that's obviously not a great use of your time and you're making less per hour. But what if it only took five minutes to do? Like, can you tell us on average how much time it takes to do, you know, per service? Now, I know there's multiple, there's bra bracelets, anklets, necklaces. Can you kind of go through each one of those? Um, they're all going to take the same amount of time to do, um, you know, from the time your customer walks in picks out their jewelry and you get it sized to their wrist, ankle or, or neck, whatever it might be. Um, you're going to only need about 15 to 20 minutes. Usually for myself, I book out 15 minutes per customer. Um, okay. and I, I kind of advertise, you know, if you're coming with a group, make sure that each person books a, a time slot. Yeah. I've seen these pop-up shops in various cities to where, you know, they might be in an event and have like their own little booth or tent. And like, there's people lined out the door and just like, you know, tons of mm -hmm. people waiting. And so, you know, in that situation, how quickly do you think, you know, they can get through people? Are you saying about 15 minutes or do about six people per hour? What's your best guess on that? Um, I would still keep it at 15 minutes and always, even if it only takes five minutes to do someone, it might take 15 minutes with the next person. I'm really big on customer service. So if I allot 15 minutes per client, that's what I'm going to do. Now, if it's a pop-up and you got to line out the door, I'm not saying rush through it, but you know, it's, I'm one customer might look at your jewelry pad and say, I want that link and I want that link. And the next person might, you know, they want to put it on their wrist and they want to look at it with a different color link and, you know, kind of play with it, ask their friend and decide. So you really want to give them time to do that. So I still stand true to the, you know, book 15 minutes and at a pop up, if people get in and out faster than that, then that's just kind of what happens. And there's ways to speed that up. Like, you know, just like if you're waiting at a food truck or, you know, food stand uh, mm -hmm. and you don't really know what you want. Like if you have paper menus or menus that they can either pull up on their phone with a QR code or look at, you know, yeah. a lot of people can already have a decision made by the time they get up there. But like you mentioned, like somebody might see a bracelet or see a necklace and be like, wow, instead of getting one thing, I want two or three things. And, you know, that 600, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, 20 minutes later, you just made $600. And so that's, you know, huge profit margins. Yeah, for me, at least I know nine times out of 10, if someone books permanent jewelry, they have the anticipation of just getting like one bracelet. Usually that's the most popular thing are bracelets and they end up walking out with a matching anklet or they stacked their bracelet or they decided they needed the necklace too. So yeah, and we've got a chart. We'll, we'll put it up for you guys to see. But like just as an example, like 
The average size necklace is about 18 inches. Um, let's let's talk about you know 14 karat solid gold because um, you know with that material you, you know it can it can be expensive. You know I know you said that you didn't offer that much 14 karat gold when you started because you weren't able to get you know access to enough funds to buy it because like can you kind of go over like how much it costs if the person were to go try to buy it? Well, the thing about 14 karat gold is it's not, um, you can't really purchase it at a reasonable number unless you buy 50 foot of one style. And just being a, a small business owner, you know, I have no need to have 50 foot of one style. Um, and that would probably, you know, I, I mean, I could, but if I spent all of my funds on that one style, then I also still have to buy 50 feet of like eight more styles and that's not feasible. Yeah. Um, it wasn't for me. It's not really for a whole lot of people. So that's average, the really good thing. On average, how much does 50 feet of gold, you know, cost? Depends. Gold fluctuates in price. Um, and it's also going to depend on if you have something that's really thin and dainty like this, or if it's three times as thick as that, it's going to fluctuate in price. It can be, you know, $60 a foot or it could be $450 a foot. Yeah. But either way, we're talking about thousands here, right? Yeah. 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 But so that's of money. Yeah, that's one of the advantages. We own Linked Permanent Jewelry Training Company, and so our students get access to huge discounted rates. And so instead of you know them trying to spend you know five thousand dollars on a roll of gold, uh, you know necklace, they're able to buy it by the foot from us. Um, so that's one of the amazing benefits we offer to our students. Mm -hmm. So let's talk uh, another. So let's go back to eighteen inch necklace, like I was talking about. So a gold necklace. Uh, it's gonna. I'm looking down at the chart right here. It's gonna cost uh, on average, like you said, gold fluctuates, but about seventy-five dollars for that eighteen inches of, of gold, solid fourteen karat. Um, but you can sell that for on average about four hundred dollars, and so you're looking at like over three hundred and fifteen dollars of profit. And like we said, that only takes fifteen minutes. So you know, you get a pop-up shop, or you know, you got people lined up out of the door, and you do four people in an hour. On average, like if you're making like three hundred dollars a profit per person, that's what twelve hundred dollars an hour. I mean, if you would like to make twelve hundred dollars an hour, comment below and let us know because you know this might be the right service for you, the the right business for you. Yeah, definitely. So we've had a, uh, a few students come to us and say, you know, like we saw some pop up that was only charging like this amount, or they were like charging cheap prices. That's on them, but we don't recommend our students charging cheap prices. We want it to be more of a luxury service. And the good thing is I provide a lot, like for those who don't know me, I've worked with thousands of beauty business owners for the past five years. Um, I've got over a thousand testimonials and reviews. And so um, I actually help our students come up with, you know, one pricing strategy to how to sell and how to brand your content and business because you know, anyone can start a business, but not everyone can maintain a business. You know, in fact, 90% of small businesses go out of business the first couple of years. And so that's what I'm here to um, help our students, like, you know, give them the most tools possible so that they can charge high prices, make a lot of money and be successful compared to the other people who, you know, don't have our same resources. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I did not know that was 90%. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, the exact statistic is, I don't know if it's two years or three years, but, you know, the majority of small businesses are either, not, you know, and that's just people not going out of business, um, not to mention all the people that are underwater or, you know, not profitable. Mm -hmm. And so when I partnered with Sarah, I was like, you know, if there's one thing, I've, I've seen all kinds of different types of training throughout the beauty industry. And if there's one thing I want to do is to make sure our students are, you know, I can't sit there and be successful for them, but I want to give them every possible tool and resource and guidance so that they can have the best possible chance of being successful. And, you know, the good thing about, you know, if you're watching this, you know that permanent jewelry is trending. And so, you know, the people who get in on this trend early are not going to have any problems with that because it's going to book up like crazy because this is a popular thing. It's just like, you know, I kind of mm -hmm. equate it to Bitcoin back in 2014. Like if I had bought you know, Bitcoin when it was 500 bucks, then I could have made a ton of money. And so that's how I kind of see, you know, early adopters of trends like this. And so, um, I mean, think about how many hairstylists do you know, just in your town? And now how many permanent jewelry artists do you know? Exactly. And so the more rare services, like the less, de the less supply, it's all supply and demand, the less supply, the higher the demand. And so right now, the demand is huge for this. And so, you know, if you're not in on this yet, definitely, definitely you need to reach out and I'll include some links below where you can check out our, you know, we have interest-free financing and, you know, easy ways to get signed up. But, you know, back to, you know, profits and how much people can make. So let's just, let's break down the numbers. Um, 
So let's say somebody's working five days a week and let's say on average they're making, I don't know, let's keep the, the numbers simple, like $1,000 a day, which would be what, you know, a few necklaces and maybe a bracelet. Easy mm -hmm. to sell. So $1,000 a day, that's 5,000 a week. So that's 20K a month. And that's, to me, that that's conservative numbers. That's if you're not really trying hard. Um, yeah, they're not actually making, working five days. They're working a couple of hours a day, if that. Yeah, exactly. That's only working two to three hours a day. And so imagine if you're doing this for like, you know, full time, eight hours a day, and you're, you got your marketing on point, which we will help you with as a student, you know, you could easily bring home like 30 to 50K um, on this per month mm -hmm. with, you know, with very high profit margins, like we said, because that, you know, if, if we're talking about on average 10x profit margins, then material might cost you $5,000 to make $50,000. And so uh, it's, and, and like I said, our students get discounted rates. Is there anything else, Sarah, that, you know, from your experience as a permanent jewelry artist, you know, that you want to mention about how you price or, you know, any tips here and there for that? Um, so I was pricing by the foot before we kind of launched the training. And when I started getting the questions about, like, okay, I'm trying to set up my online website. Like what price should I tell my customer? This is the thing is every single time that I get a new or jewelry order, I reprice. Um, and I didn't know that from the beginning and I lost a lot of money. I also was losing money because I said, okay, a bracelet is X amount of dollars. Well, your wrist is different size than my wrist. So I'm spending a whole lot more money on your jewelry, even though you're paying me the same that I, you know, that we would use on my, what, maybe three and a half inch wrist. So I think that pricing by the inch is going to be a really good idea. So having like maybe this long of each, you know, of your links, just a, a, a sample size, just so they can see it and having a tag on it that says by the inch. So for sterling silver, you could say, oh, it's $7 an inch. Basically, if you buy a sterling silver, the same exact one you have on your wrist, um, length for $10, it's $10 a foot, um, you are going to decide, you know, sterling silver needs to stay within the price range of $60 to $100. So if you price it at $100 and you divide 100 by the 12 inches in that foot that you spent $10 on, you're going to be around $9 an inch. So you would take your um, sample tag of your jewelry, put a tag on it in display that says that it's $9 an inch. And once you finish that 12 foot of material, you should have profit around. Uh, so you, you're going to charge 108 in total for that 10 foot of material and then subtract $10 from that. So $98 is what you'll profit off that $10 spend. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, like we said, it's huge profit margins. It's, you know, the cost of material is very low, especially for our clients who get discounted wholesale rates. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to um, bring this training to you guys. If you want more information, feel free to reach out to us. Like I said, my name is Jake Randolph. This is Sarah Otto. Sorry, I keep pointing the wrong way. Um, this is Sarah Otto, and we are the co-founders of Linked Permanent Jewelry Training. And so check out our Instagram, um, and I'll include those links below. But anyways, thank you guys, and stick around for the next video, because in part three, we're going to be going over some very, very important things. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.